morning guys <clears throat> haven't done a uh, garden tour in a little bit so let's go through and see what's growing in the garden some things are looking really good some things are looking not so good some things have been really good successes I've got a squash that's produced like six squashes already um, and then I've got some that haven't produced anything so let's go grab our coffees and take a peek radio good morning okay so I think where we'll start um, is just along the shed here because there's kind of fun stuff growing in these beds. So I'm going to show you the um, noodle beans. I've already picked a bunch um, and so what's growing isn't quite as impressive but these guys are impressive. So here, here's the noodle beans. Okay, so they start out kind of small like this guy. And you might be like, that's small? But like, yeah, it is because they get huge. So you can see the ones up here. Um, so they'll start from, see that little white thing? Oh, the squirrels are having a freak out. Um, that's the flower. And then it will get this little like bean-like thing, which you can see one of them has. And that little bean-like thing just gets bigger and bigger. Oh, here's a clip, like one down lower I can show you. So, oops. And so the flower, not super pretty right now. It opens up and it's a really beautiful color of purple. And then that's the bean. That's how it starts. And it'll just get bigger and bigger and bigger and redder and redder and redder. So that's some noodle beans, you guys. Pretty cool. Look at that. Come around here. Uh, space age thingies. So this is a loofah gourd. We got one to grow. Um, it's gonna be really oddly shaped. So I may end up using just the bottom part for like circle sponges for washing dishes and stuff. But still, super cool. I'm excited that we got one. Behind it is a tromboncino squash. And I just saw a bee go in here. Is he still in there? Squash bees. Did you know that there are bees specific to squash? That's what pollinates squash. Um, these are the Lufigurd flowers. And I've discovered they only open at night. So I'm not sure what would pollinate a loofah in the wild, because we don't really have them growing around here. Um, but I did try to hand pollinate this one. I tried to do it with a few others, but as you can see, it's brown. It didn't take. That one did not get pollinated. Um, and there's one up top here, but I don't think you'll be able to see it. I'm hoping that one got pollinated, but we don't know. Oh, hi. Who are you? No? Out of here? Okay, bye. I kind of love that about the garden, you guys. There's like squirrels and cardinals and blue jays, chickadees. Um, yeah, I love that about this little back garden. Just all the wildlife that we got. Um, the squirrels actually have been eating my ground cherries. So yeah, here's an example. Look at this. So I keep finding like ground cherry wrappers all over my garden. So I haven't really eaten too many of them, <laughs> but I guess if they're enjoying them. Cool. <laughs> Moving on from our loofahs and squash, I've got in this corner another squash. It's a butternut and it has done nothing. So yeah, that's a bit of a disappointment. Not a single even like small butternut squashy looking fruit on it. There's still time, um, but yeah hasn't really produced anything, which is too bad. Um, beside that, I've got my tomatillos. So there's all kinds of fruit on these tomatillo plants. I'm just gonna put my coffee down and then I can flip you guys around here. So yeah, all kinds of fruit. I've never grown tomatillos, so if you guys have um, any tidbits, please let me know. Like, I don't know when they're ripe, like, is that getting ripe? Will it pop open? 
Is it kind of like the ground cherries? They go completely like dry and husky. I don't really know. But I am looking forward to making um, green tomato salsa with them. I've got all kinds of onions from the garden. Um, this row here had been all onions and they're all pretty much up now and curing in the shed. Um, so I'm looking forward to using the onions that were in here. I've got a bunch of jalapenos and some other hot peppers growing in the garden. And then these tomatoes, green salsa verdes. Oh, look at that. This one's got a hole in it. Something got in there. Interesting. So yeah, when I do that, I'll take you guys along for the process. Okay, beans are starting to fill. Oh. Knocked my coffee over, you guys. All right, beans are starting to finish off. And these guys are so easy to grow because you quite literally just like let them grow and leave it alone. Um, you'll see they start drying out a little bit, like the color changes, and then they will go completely dry. I picked most of the really dry ones yesterday, so I don't think there's any examples on here. But what you're growing them for is that needy bean inside. So you let them dry, um, then you husk it, take the beans out, and just put them in a container in the house, and then, yeah cook them like you would any dry bean. You can soak them for a while and then cook them for a couple hours in a pot or put them in a slow cooker. They're really good. I mean, for the effort, right? Like it's almost no effort. You plant the seed, the plant grows, you look at the pretty flowers, you eat the beans. Like there's no effort involved in these at all. I'm gonna show you, we have a melon down here. Melons are kind of a luxurious crop. Like I don't, normally grow melons but look at you guys okay can i get in there enough there it is ah hello so there are three plants in here and i think from the three plants we are going to get one melon that's what i mean by it being a bit of a luxurious crop like if you're growing in a small space like i am and you're growing for food that could have been a better place or use of space but <clears throat> it brings joy and I'm sure when we eat it, it's gonna be fantastic. Look at this. That is the sixth spaghetti squash that this plant has produced. And it starts, let me stand back, over there by the compost bin. And it's weaved its way in and out over to here. And then it also went behind the compost bin and like out this way. So, super pleased with this squash and i think if i'm learning anything you guys plant your squash near your compost bins i did this last year too and that was the one squash that thrived it went nuts and i believe it's because of the compost so maybe next year it's just a matter of growing one squash here and getting six squash off of it and then saving my climbing spaces for other climbing things beans, cucumbers, melons. We'll see. Every year you learn something. Um, the peas, really not looking good right now, but because the squash is now intertwined with them, I'm gonna leave it alone. Um, so yeah, it's gonna look ugly, but I'm gonna leave it. All right, I got some nice bok choy down below. Carrots, they're all growing in. Got some carrots down in there, good sized ones. So that's very nice. Got some green onions, some zucchini. I've yet to get a zucchini, you guys. I started this plant late um, and then I put two more in over here recently. Well, not recently, beginning of July. Um, so yeah, while everybody is like swimming in zucchini right now, I'm like, can I please just get one, please? Okay, look at the raspberries. Ooh. And there's more over there. And then this is how they start, you guys. That will turn into this, which will then turn red, which will turn into fruit. And let's pan over a little bit. Hey, cucumber. Probably pick that guy today or tomorrow. Um, and let me show you, there's another melon in here. This is a different type of melon. This was like a small Russian melon. 
Um, so they're only supposed to get about that big. And most of the potatoes are out now. Um, I might do a fall crop in here, something quick. I'm thinking like fall greens, possibly like mizunas, um, tatsoys, that kind of thing. So they're very cold hardy, um, quick growing greens. Um, we're getting into, when is it, August 13th, 14th, so I really gotta do that soon. Um, we may have like growing season until December, but the days get shorter. So if I don't get them in now, um, they don't get enough of a head start to really get growing. Some of the cabbages are starting to head up and some of them aren't. <laughs> so we might get like three or four cabbages, which would be lovely. Um, ooh, peppers. This pepper plant was so prolific that it actually broke its own stem. I'm going to show you. So it had, where was it? Yeah, right there. It had a whole nother branch with like two more big peppers on them um, and the branch broke. So I probably should have taken a couple of peppers off beforehand. But yeah, nice healthy plants. Getting some good blocky looking fruits. These will turn orange if I leave them long enough, um, but I haven't yet. I've just been picking them. All right, I think that's the garden tour for today. I'm gonna go get my empty cup of coffee that I knocked over and probably make myself another one because it's a little bit like when you have a cookie and you put it down somewhere and you're like, I know I didn't finish that cookie. It's here somewhere. So. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you have a great weekend and we will see you again soon. Bye-bye.